it's time again to review another fake bacon offering. Today it's Richmond meat-free smoked bacon rashers. So I wasn't going to do another fake bacon video for a while, but I was shopping for other things and I walked past these in the supermarket and I was just kind of impressed by how closely they resemble real bacon. And so I decided to pick up a pack and make a video about it. And here we are. There are a bunch of frequently asked questions that pop up every time I review a fake meat product. They are these questions on the screen now. Rather than go on and on about those in the video, I think what I'll do is I'll pin a comment with what I think are my answers to these questions underneath the video. Feel free to engage in the discussion there, but I might not participate. Anyway, so let's have a look at what we've got here. So we've got eight slices of bacon, or rashers as we call them in the UK. Of course it's not real bacon, but the ingredients are water, rehydrated textured soya and wheat protein, salt, soya bean oil, natural flavouring, rapeseed oil, stabilisers which is carrageenan, guar gum, methyl cellulose, wheat protein, soya protein, salt, dextrose, natural flavourings, colouring foods, colouring foods, blackcurrant radish apple, starch, natural smoked flavouring, chicory root fibre, acid, citric acid. As with the previous product, there's quite a lot going on on this label. So I just put a scan of that on the screen now. If you want to read that, pause the video and have a look. Cooking instructions are pan fry in a little preheated oil for three to four minutes. So let's crack on and do that. Before we do that, I'm just going to get a few things ready. I'm going to make this fake bacon in a bread roll with tomato and lettuce. Look at this tomato. Have you ever seen anything quite like that? I saw that and I had to buy it. Um, rather than me try and describe how big that is to you, it is 14 centimetres across its longest dimension, and when I weighed it, it's 424 grams. So what a tomato. I just couldn't resist buying that when I saw it. It makes me incredibly happy that tomatoes like this exist and I can have them. I wish I could grow them like that, but it just doesn't happen in our garden. So I really do think they've nailed the look of this product. It looks a lot like real bacon, I'd say most of the giveaway is the uniformity of these slices. They all look exactly the same, but it's not as floppy as real bacon, but it's pretty convincing. There is a difference in texture between the white fat and the meaty bit, so that's also good. That's interesting. The other ones we reviewed last week didn't have that difference. They were kind of different colours, but they were uniformly flavoured and textured. It smells like bacon. We preheated the oil. I shall put a few of those in the pan. And I think I can probably squeeze five of them into this pan. I don't know if they're going to shrink or not. So I'm going to have to ask you to pardon the dog barking in the background. The smell as it's cooking is really, really convincingly bacon-like. Okay, they're starting to crisp up on one side. So we'll just flip those over. Looking really good. I'm just going to turn that down a little bit because it is spitting now. Which is also kind of authentic. Okay, I'm going to stop just about here because we are getting some nice crisping on the edges. But they're not going to dry out too much. And then over here, I've got a wholemeal bread roll this time. I'm not going to butter that or, or put anything on it because there is quite a lot of fat on these fake bacon slices. There's quite a lot of oil adhering from the oil that I added in the pan. I'm going to put a generous amount of that fake bacon in there. Because why not? I think I'll have a big slice of this tomato. Just a snip a bit of lettuce on top in there. So there it is. It does look the part, but what does it taste like? That tastes pretty good. What I forgot to do was have a look at it as a cooked product. So I'll come back to the flavour of the whole sandwich in a minute. Here's what it looks like. It does look pretty convincingly like bacon and the meaty bit tastes like Texture meaty bit is more like fried spam than it is like fried bacon, but it's pretty good. A little bit weak on flavour maybe, 
the white stripes of fat are the most surprising bit. They really kind of nailed that. Well, I will save a little morsel for the Eva test, but I would say this is bordering on the territory of something you could serve in a sandwich. And if you didn't tell me that was bacon, I think I would just assume that that was some different kind of bacon, different from what I normally have, than actually that it was plant-based. So it's a little bit lacking on the salt. And I think they have done that probably to make the label look healthier. Again, I can taste that I'm eating a thing that's made from pea protein. Well, of the several meat-free bacon substitutes I've tried so far, the commercial ones that is, this is definitely the one that's come closest to resembling the real thing. Which is quite interesting because I wasn't very complimentary about their sausages, but that's partly because I don't like their meat-based sausages all that much. Personal preference, obviously. Anyway, I think we need to do the Eva test now. Right, I've got a little bit of fake bacon for you. I think it's only for penguins, though. I think it's only for penguins. Good girl. Tell me what you think of that. I think she enjoyed that. She ate that without spitting it out, without dropping it, and without giving me that questioning look. So that's interesting in itself as well. Obviously, the judgment of a dog and the judgment of a human is different anyway. I think for, for Eva, some of those previous products we sampled maybe didn't taste dead enough. There she is. <laughs> She's eating carpet fluff now, so, you know, we've got to take Eva's judgment with a pinch of salt, just as you should take my judgment with a pinch of salt. Okay, well, it's the next day, and I've got three rashes of this fake bacon left. And I thought, what about testing it in a different context? Suppose you're not a vegan, but you're a ovo-lacto-vegetarian, or actually vegetarian. That's the definition of vegetarian for most people. So I'm going to try it in a bacon and egg sandwich. So as before, bacon into a little bit of hot oil in the pan. I've only got three rashes left. And I think we might fry this a little bit more crispy this time. Now, it does occur to me there are two broad categories of bacon, smoked and unsmoked. And some people don't like smoked bacon. So if you're looking for a substitute for unsmoked bacon, you're kind of out of luck because nearly all of these fake bacon products seem to be of the smoked variety. In a bacon and egg sandwich, I like a bit of hot sauce. So I'm gonna have a little bit of sriracha on there and then my fried egg. And I got a kind of over easy fried egg there, so that's gonna burst and the yolk is gonna fill the sandwich, which I like. It's also gonna drip all over my board, probably my hands too. So what is this fake bacon like in this presentation? It's pretty good. The egg is doing a bit of the heavy lifting here, I've gotta say. It doesn't take well to being that crispy. I think I slightly overcooked that, and those crispy edges that you saw on there, I've got a faint flavor of burnt toast. Definitely better when it's cooked on the lighter side. So that was Richmond meat-free smoked bacon rashers. Pretty good, I would say. Still lacking something in terms of bacon experience, but, but getting pretty close, I think. A little bit on the expensive side, but I guess the price would come down if more people bought it. I hope that was interesting. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.